So that says live. Yep. Oh, it's live. Hello. There we go. So we're currently live. Yeah. Uh, so hello everybody and welcome to another live stream. Uh, today I am joined by a Mr. I do apologize if I mispronounce your name. Uh, Marco Orsini. Is yep. Marco. Yep, Marco Orsini, also known as uh, Marco Polo 3 here on YouTube. My YouTube following isn't high, but I might work on that. Not so sure just yet. <laughs> it, it always helps, but it, it can take a while to, to build up nowadays. Uh, I find it was easier when you first started, uh, when YouTube wasn't as well known. Uh, now that everybody can monetize, it's like it's a needle in a haystack. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Okay, so give me a sec. I'll just screen share here. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. And that way I'll be able to show you actually um, not the email. <laughs> it stops flashing. Come on, go to Photoshop. Oh, computer's going to be fun today. Oh, <laughs> That's always nice when the computer's trying to be quote unquote fun. <laughs> All right. Next. All right. Okay, so we're gonna actually start on this one here because uh, it's more much more technical. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna unlock this though first. And I'm actually gonna change your current proportions uh, okay. just so I can. Uh, play around with the canvas size a bit more. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to make a new layer first so that I don't modify this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so since I know you did this one traditionally, mm -hmm. um, do you have a habit of setting up a horizon line and vanishing points? Uh, for this one in particular, I actually I try my best to set up a horizon line and okay. uh, starting from where your mouse is actually, right by that dome before the clock tower. Like right yeah, over right here, set it and everything. Yeah. And I looked at some reference just so I can at least get a good idea of where, you know, where to start with this piece. Because with the city piece, it's like, holy crap, you don't know where to go and all that mess. So <laughs> uh, It can be pretty overwhelming uh, at first, especially. Uh, so what I just did is I actually used, um, this makes digital painting a lot easier, is I actually used the star tool. There's specific <laughs> settings, though. Uh, so if you go under, I believe it's the polygon tool, mm -hmm. and then if you go under geometry options and you hit the downward arrow, you can choose star, and you set the indents, uh, indent sizes to 99, okay. it will give you essentially uh, all your reference lines. Perfect. Now, depending on how slow your computer is, though, you're going to want to flatten this out as soon as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. so let's keep that in mind. And during right, live right. streams, it's definitely going to be a must. So let me just, just gonna just going to lighten up that center part there. Uh, let's see. One thing I haven't figured out yet is why it sometimes lets me merge and sometimes doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember merging. I never really merge unless you know I'm doing line work, really, just in case. And that's the only time I ever really merge anything. Yeah, it's, it's going to work in layers. Uh, and only when you're happy with something uh, do I tend to merge. It depends on the image, though, because if it's supposed to be a very loose image and I'm being very dynamic with it, mm -hmm. then I'll actually merge as I go. 
All right. Because um, right. it forces you to uh, paint more, I find. All right. So. Uh, if you hold down the control button and you tap uh, G, you can actually group different layers together. I didn't know if you knew that or not. I actually just got the hang of grouping, um, like since my semester started in uh, around August, August thirty, August twenty, the twenty ninth, somewhere in the late twenties <laughs> in August. So I just started getting the hang of that with um, uh, uh, an assignment I had earlier, in, um, another class uh, that isn't the mentor class, sadly, but he treated it very. Ooh, those deadlines. But I remember um, grouping a lot of stuff for like line work, skin, um, skin or color. Actually, one was just the basic color where I did all the color and the um, all the color for everything, actually. And then of course in the same um, uh, group folder, I did like the highlights and the shading in that one as well. Yeah, it makes a big difference and it saves you a lot of time. Oh you yeah. You don't have to look for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do have some pretty interesting elements here. Um, just added an additional layer just so I can uh, focus on the buildings here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to make some recommendations based off what I see here. Um, so most of these buildings actually tend to pretty much line up pretty close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, if you use the horizon line here, uh, and if I draw this in, it's going to be really rough because I'm not really caring about my perspective. Uh, they line up all pretty much under the same line. Uh, what you can do to make it a bit more interesting is uh, move some of these buildings a little bit more forward to the viewer. Uh huh. And that's going to help. Now, I do realize that you were probably drawing on 8.5 by 11 paper, so yeah. probably didn't have too much room to work with. Yeah. <laughs> I took up the entire page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I could tell. <laughs> that's, that's normally how it works. Uh, what I normally tend to do is I'll do a really... Like if I'm doing a very technical drawing like this, I'll do really rough boxes uh, just to, to figure out the different size relationships uh, for everything, just as I'm doing right now, actually. And it makes it a lot easier when you're working because then you can just work on really super basic shapes, and that always simplifies the process. Uh -huh. uh, also... You kind of want to try to avoid lining up all the buildings to the same time, so uh, right. offsetting them a, a little bit will help prevent that. Mm -hmm. And once again, if you're working on the basic shapes, uh, make it a lot easier. Uh, to get those straight lines, though, um, there's two ways. You can actually uh, hold down the shift button and click two points, depending on your brush. Yeah, that I actually learned recently as well. Um, the shift one, and for diagonal, I guess you could say, you do the yeah. um, the click one way, and then go to the other point, and then just, you know, shift and click that way. So. Yeah, this is a lot of time. <laughs> and it, and it, made, it makes line so, straight lines so much easier, because I remember... Um, I was having, I never knew that way until literally senior, until this year, actually. And uh, I would always have to go into Illustrator for, or some way that I remember doing. I think it was the uh, small rectangular, the small rectangular. And I used to skip, uh, make it very, very skinny. And I'd just use the scale to, like, you know, make it wider, you know, um, skinnier, you know, depending on what I needed. And that's what I usually did for, like, straight lines. Um, I like the diversity that you have of ideas. <laughs> uh, no, I'm serious. It's actually not all artists have that. Um, it's something I actually personally have struggled with, and it took me a while to gain a certain repertoire to be able to work around that. Mm -hmm. um, so 
once you get the basics down, you'll actually be pretty good because I'm seeing a lot of interesting elements in here. Let you, I can tell that you already understand that you need to tie elements together. So you've tied in uh, the clock portions here mm -hmm. and you've put in two other buildings and that's good. I'm happy to see that. Um, I'd like to see you experiment a bit more with some more window designs and the best way to do that is just to look at some reference here. Uh, so, uh, reference windows more. Uh, let's look for, let's see if medieval windows will show up because they had very intriguing window designs. Oh, uh, okay, like the archways and the way that they, um, the pillars on the inside as well. Exactly, yeah, and that's something you can definitely do because uh, it's, it looks like you're going for a steampunk feel, so you can definitely add yeah. those in there. Now, uh, you might want to keep in context, though, that certain windows are, are more popular for certain uh, building types. Like, this would be more popular probably for these tinier houses here. So uh -huh. if I draw those in, um, this window is way too big, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. for this house. It'd be a monstrous window. So definitely scale down the window. Yeah. Um, your door is a bit big. You're going to have to watch your scales. Uh, <laughs> the easiest way to do that is just add a person. It could be as simple as a stick figure. Right. Uh, so that you can get your your sizes. Horrible stick figure. <laughs> it's as bad as my dad's stick figure. So, anyways, <laughs> you kind of get the idea, though. Because if I draw a straight line here, uh, mm -hmm. then this tells me that the door should be just a little tiny bit higher than that. Right. So it would be about that big. So this door, this window I just drawn is just way too big for this. Probably be more around this size here, so just big enough just to be able to stick your head out of there. Yeah. Yeah, because um, my professor Dan Shuffleman, when he saw the sketch originally, um, he said that uh, it, it was definitely, he, he definitely commented that it was definitely out of my element because I really don't do cityscapes because I remember trying to draw a cityscape from my sister's window when she used to live in a high rise. And I was like, Oh, I, I, all I had was just like a big gap of nothing while I was trying to get the horizon line down. By the time I got the horizon line down, I was like, I'm not, when I was a young artist, of course, I was just, you know, getting trying to get every little detail. And, of course, that was a nightmare. So I guess that's what made me steer away from, like, cityscapes and environments. But I realized that one of my greatest weaknesses from all up till now um, – was environments and cityscapes. So I thought, you know what? Let me challenge myself a little bit and actually do something like that. So I thought, why not? And of course, instead of a really modern city, um, the inspiration that I got for this one was uh, off of um, uh, Prague. Actually, I looked at some. I looked at like the spire, the city of a thousand spires, as they call it. I looked at the uh, some of the reference of some of the towers in Prague and some of the um, some of the buildings that they had, and I really liked how they had some old buildings and some new buildings, some really, really modern buildings, of course, and uh, I just thought, I really like that line. It really does remind me of a steampunk feel, almost, and uh, one of my professors said, if you want to try working with steampunk, add a little bit more gearish type of an old mixed with some new, but add more gears, because gears usually help translate steampunk in, like, a setting such as Prague, so to speak. If you, if Prague was just littered full of gears and all of its architectures, it'd be a steampunk city, definitely. Especially with the pipes, since I always think steam pipes for some odd reason. It's true. <laughs> uh, steampunk does lead very well with pipes. Um, most of the stuff... Well, because it's, it's based... The whole idea behind it is uh, steam engines, right? So if I open up a new window here... And... There's a lot of interesting ways that pipes are designed as well. Uh, so let's actually look at steam engines because that's more of the inspiration. 
Uh, actually, machinery. Yeah, so this is going to give you a lot of reference on how, first of all, how the steam engine actually works, because it's pressurized steam, right? So it has to heat up, um, and that steam has to travel. It's actually not too dissimilar to water heating that's in houses still to this day. Like in our area, we still have uh, water heated houses. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's pressurized and it still pumps through. Uh, a lot of industrial areas too still have uh, steam relief valves. So they have a lot of that machinery as well. Um, but they're pretty much all based roughly on the original steam engine because a lot of that machinery has been modified, but it's the basics are still there, uh, mm. so there's nothing stopping you uh, from... This one's actually a pretty nice image here. Let's see if it gets bigger. Uh, not too big. Decently, though. Um, so there's nothing stopping you from actually just going in and adding pipe. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to add, like, I don't know if you noticed on the clock tower a bit, I yes. know it's a little bit hard, but I tried to add, like, something of, like, big pipes, and I tried to add some piping to most of it, but um, another thing that also is striking to steampunk, from what I've noticed is, it was, it's, like, pipes, gears, especially the signature color of, like, this coppery kind of feel that it has. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, earth tones mostly earth earth tones and um some cool tones to it depending and um the gears lots and lots and lots of gears and uh, I remember watching like this video um this uh, youtuber known um, she's a makeup artist called made you look by Lux and she uh, she has this um little tutorial on how to make like a steampunk hat because she did one on a steampunk uh, body paint tutorial because she mostly deals in body paint. And I remember she did a really, really good um, steampunk makeup, and she also had a little crafty uh, steampunk hat with it, and she went over a tutorial on how to make that. And I was like, wow, that's actually pretty interesting. So lots of clock imagery, too, in there, I noticed. It's like, so many clocks, so many dials. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a lot of detail work, um, but it's also fun. Uh, one key thing on here, I'm going to create a new layer here. Uh -huh. um, because understanding a bit how the gears work uh, can also help you out when you're designing these things too. Uh, you can interlace them. Right. Uh, and that will help a lot. So uh, you can have, like this is a side shot right now. Uh, I'd have to actually look at reference to see how they actually look because um, I'm not looking at reference. So. Mm-hmm. But generally, there's these little spikes, and that it hooks up onto those spikes uh, so that another gear uh, going a completely different direction can also hook up onto it. Yeah. And that will you can actually put that in perspective as well uh, to give additional depth to that area. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn that off right now. Uh, so as you can see. Um, I've actually changed the size of the windows so that they're roughly the a little bit uh, this guy's pretty much this guy's upper torso part here which is generally how big a window is right. um, it's still rough in this drawing so it's not correctly proportioned yet mm -hmm. um, also roofs generally have uh, pipes that go down through the side to help remove the water from the roof, uh -huh. you can actually include that as well. And there's these essentially little holders that hold them in place. I yeah, should do something similar to that. This is more like uh, construction stuff. And uh. I'm fortunate enough that because my dad's had to do a lot of repairs in life, I kind of understand a bit of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it, it helps with the design because you can add those supports here, but there's nothing stopping you from also adding them maybe into the, these pipes here as well. And I would probably um, recommend that you maybe add some pipes in front of some of the gears too to help show a bit more depth. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you can also make them similar to a pipe organ, where there's like different sized ones as well. Yeah. And you can have them actually going in to a center area. Because I've noticed that you have this really interesting curve here for the roof. And mm. you, can, you can play with that. You can actually have the pipes wrap around that. And oh. then, once again, repeat that same thing uh, with the rest of the buildings as well to a certain degree. Because right, right. this is the focal area. Um, but at the same time, it's also not in the foreground. Mm -hmm. So it would have less detail anyway. All right. Uh, let's see here. They have some pretty interesting shapes here. Like I like the cones. <laughs> uh, what you can do for the cones is you can taper them a bit, so add a bit more of a curve to them. Curve, okay. And that's more of a, a trick that you learn from animation when you're designing characters, because when you draw their... Uh, shoulders, you could actually draw them as a straight tube like this and then have their arm here. Um, but generally it's more appealing to the eye if you actually add a bit of a curve to it mm -hmm. in the final design. Right. So that's something that, that you learn in animation, uh, for especially for character animation. Uh, you, but you can apply that to your buildings as well. Okay. And you can have pipes here. Nothing stopping you from having release valves here. Yeah, and the second one, there's um, I have like this. Uh, I think I didn't make it noticeable, um, but I tried to. It was like a big pipe wrapping around one of the towers itself. So I was, I, I was. Yeah, really... it's this one here. <laughs> yeah, and I like that. I like the fact that you actually tried to do that because it's not an easy thing to make it wrap around the structure. Because uh, when you're doing that. You're, you not only wrap it around here, but there's also a ledge here, so you have to go down and then back in, yeah. and then back in again before you can get to the center part. Yeah, I tried to pay extra attention to that in the reference that I had because it was like if it was a pipe going up this building, technically they would still like it would be straight, but then there would also be that curve every time I hit like you know. A, um, a ledge or whatever, especially if I had to wrap up. So I paid, I tried my best to pay attention to that as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I've noticed that, and it's good that you're you're paying attention to those details because if you're paying attention to them now, then that means that you can, you're you're halfway there because you're already observing uh, the information, which is good to see. Okay, so that's good for this one here. Um, do you want me to send you the PSD then? Uh, I wouldn't mind. Okay. Uh, that, that way it gives, that, yeah, that way it gives me something to at least look at and, you know, observe and see what I can do uh, for when I, of course, give you the final, which will probably, I think, next week. Because I still have the old schedule on me right now, but I think it's next week I'll be giving you Okay. That. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so my boss has been playing around with my schedule, though, so <laughs> hopefully there's no changes. Hey, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Real life comes first, you know? <laughs> well, either way, I'm streaming at night, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's when I'm usually up most of the time, anyway. <laughs> I try to at least make it to most of your live streams, on, because my my schedule at school usually has me working all the way till night anyway. It's most it's mostly like I gotta focus on this and everything, but I like seeing you draw and everything, so it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so torn. Which one should I do? But she's got good artwork and <laughs> inspire. <laughs> Uh, well, when I'm working, I, well, okay, it obviously depends on the type of work you're doing, because if you're writing an essay, probably not a good idea unless you turn off the volume. <laughs> um, I actually look at other artists' work as well. Uh, it just gives me inspiration. Yeah. I like the fact that you experimented with this angle, by the way. I, I wanted to make it a dynamic piece, and I actually took a photo of uh, the reference of the vampire actually sucking the blood. I actually used me 
um, standing in my room, and I had to move fo so far back, and I was using my camera phone, too. Um, I was trying to at least get reference for how it was, and I had to, like, loosen up and work myself out, because I didn't want it to be a very stiff pose at all. And yep. there's this other uh, site that I use for uh, reference in terms of posing called the Pose Maniacs. And yeah, I, I think I heard it. Yeah, and I took, um, I used one of the, uh, the floating poses of um, it, it had the anatomy of the muscle and the muscle there too, of uh, pretty much a female figure floating, um, and I figured um, I want to do something with that. And I was looking at um, what is it? Uh, I know this is going to sound so corny. I was looking at videos of water bending from Avatar. Uh, you know what? That's great reference. <laughs> <laughs> like I know it's cartoony, but I was looking at reference for that just to see what I could do. Um, what I could do with that because I really wanted to do something mystic and something to really show this character in action. And I originally I wanted to show this character with a scythe, but I said no. I want him to. He's a vampire, and what's the one thing that they like the most? Blood. So I want to know what I can do with that. So I did a few. Um, Rough sketches with the di with the um the playing of the dynamic of course and um I uh, of course I said you know what just see what happens when you put it on the computer because I already trimmed out the uh, the figures so I said all right might as well so I wound up sketching it on the computer entirely and um, I had fun I ha actually had fun with this one um, even though it's a bit of a rough but I had fun with this one um, and. Um, what else? What else? I tried to play with it a little bit, and now that I'm looking at it, uh, the empty space uh, right where my watermark is on the like lower left hand, I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, should something go there? I don't know. It's so empty. But um, aside from that, um, I really did my best with the dynamics with this one. <laughs> yeah, no, the referencing is definitely helping uh, your pose. Um, what you can do, though is uh, what I was mentioning in the other one, oh, helps if I actually have black selected, um, <laughs> is curve out the limbs a bit. Um, and the reason why you're going to do that is because uh, this arm here, it wouldn't actually do this, not with the anatomy, mm -hmm. it would actually curve in like this. Uh, unless okay. they're extremely muscular because then you would have something like well, you'd have the muscle here and then you'd have a curve here right right going like that um, but it's just easier to simplify it before because then you can always add that detail after you have to simplify right, right. your hands are actually pretty good for this <laughs> Again, I try. I, like I was thinking of giving, of making it like really rough to where it, like all you'd see is like these little stick fingers and everything. But I thought about it, and the character for this one was actually a character that I've been drawing for um, a while, especially on my deviant art. Um, uh, I, I did my. Uh, I was like, you know what? I wanted to display him a little bit because I haven't displayed him in a while, and since. You know, I progressed a little bit more since I drew him. I figured, why not just, you know, draw him again and see what happens. So I really took my time with him more than I did the female figure, as you can see. And, um, you know, I, uh, he's really... Uh, the one thing I really liked about him, though, or the one thing I wanted to emphasize was the fact that he has the whole bat motif on his clothing from the sleeves to the leggings to the strange leggings to everything and so I tried to emphasize that as much as I can and before I knew it I was like spending more time on the figure and I was like wait not what I wanted to do but I kind of like him this way a little bit <laughs> okay I've I've just roughed out um, the anatomy because I need to know what's going on underneath the clothes mm -hmm. uh, so because I'm assuming that you did that probably in your original sketch too yeah, I, uh, I I roughed it out as my teacher calls it uh, the potato method um, in drawing, where it just looks like a sack of potatoes on top of one another almost. Oh, like so, something like that, or yeah, like I, I did yeah I did it to where I tried to where it's like I knew what the head was and I tried to get the joints down um, 
to at least know, like, all right, if my arm moved this way, then that would happen. You know, try to at least get that down, mostly, for this one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to focus mostly on showing you then how to wrap close. Okay. Um, based off of uh, the character breakdown I've done, mainly because I've emphasized some of the curves and changed some of the curves as well. Right. Um, okay, so uh, wherever there's a, a bend in the arm, you would, you would actually see a fold. Uh, so this would probably do something more along these lines here. And you have actually chosen something that's actually really difficult to draw, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that <laughs> no, that's close. a good thing, because you're challenging yourself. His clothing from the little sketches that I did in high school, like, I remember... I, I know it's purely fantasy, but the way his clothing is is it fits really tight around, like, the upper arm where the shoulder is, but right where the elbow starts, where the bend usually starts, it's very loose and very flowy and very big. The same goes for his um, his pants. They're really tight around the thighs, but the moment it gets past the knee or a little bit above the knee, they're really flowy, really big and everything, and I... Uh, I think the goal was for at the time was to of course emphasize the whole bat motif that he had going on, um, but also to add a little bit more uh, of a dramatic feel to him because this was a character that uh, that I was really inspired to do at the time. Okay, so let's see if you can maintain that then uh, with this. Uh huh. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I added a fold in the hip here. Uh -huh. uh, so this line is actually correct. I would actually uh, show a bit of overlap for the clothing. Uh -huh. And move some of this downwards. Because gravity would essentially uh, force it to move down. Right. Uh, so that would lengthen it. But overall, it's actually not that bad. It's actually pretty good. Thank you. Um, was the hip supposed to be really tight then? For the clothes? Uh, for, the, for the clothes, yeah, they were. I don't know why I added it to make it look more like a jacket, but I guess, um, yeah, I don't know why I added it more to look like a jacket. But around, like, the jacket area, it's uh, a little bit tight around the waist as well. Okay. Wow, my character has an interesting sense of fashion now that I think. <laughs> <laughs> Another inspiration that for this character especially was um, I, uh, I I was looking at the movie version of um, and I think I remember you mentioned it in a stream whether it was a yay or a nay for you. It was Interview with a Vampire. I watched that and then I started looking up um on the, the Wikipedia page that they had it, because on the Wikipedia page they have a lot of um, the lore pasted down, even though it's kind of like, you know, because um, I've never really read her books um, that much, but now that I'm thinking about it, I might want to read them again just to get more inspiration. But um, obviously the way that she wrote her vampires is they're very emotional, very empathic, very beautiful, and I wanted to kind of emphasize that. Beauty eyes. Um, wow. Beautify. Sorry. Beautify um, this character a little bit because um, he might have this really menacing appearance, especially, you know, in this picture, he's sucking blood telepathically out of a poor victim. Um, even though he has, like, this little tough demeanor, he has a very softer side to him, a very emotional side, especially um, with the amount of time that he's lived. So... <laughs> I'm happy to see that you have a story, though. Because um, uh, having a, at least a rough idea of the story helps to narrow down uh, some of the design elements as well. Yeah, the story for him is that he was actually a, um, a pure... His father was a human. His father was human as well as his mom. And the thing was, mom was dying from something while she was pregnant. 
And so in order to save you know, his kid and his wife, he, uh, the father wound up using sorcery of some sort to try and like save the wife. But unfortunately, the wife didn't make it, but the child lived. But um, the spell also backfired on him a little bit. And uh, that's how my that's how this character was born. So in a way, he is a sorcery maid slash pure blooded born vampire. And uh, in my mythos, I made the uh, the vampires a little bit um, different than your average, but like you know, um, I added some uh, original elements and some that were based off of other elements as well from the traditional vampire lore. But um, ever since then, uh, him and his dad have just been uh, the quote-unquote acting as if they were the royal family of vampires and they are the originals and they've been doing their best to, you know, kind of enforce their wills on mainstream vampirism. Um, unfortunately, uh, his fa um, my character, uh, this character, um, didn't like it, so didn't like the way his father was doing things, and so he thought, yeah, no, and especially after his father killed someone special to him, uh, he wound up uh, having to kill his dad, and after that, the, uh, the regime of his dad was done, and vampires were, quote-unquote, free to do whatever they want. They weren't enforced by, quote-unquote, laws other than the basic, you know, don't feed in public, you know, don't do that. If you do feed and have to kill someone, you know, you know the basic laws of vampirism, or common, that common sense would put into play. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, in this outfit, this is his, uh, in the outfit with the bat motif, it's his original, um, slash, uh, I want to say, semi-modern garb. It still shows the royalty and pristine that he puts himself on, and kind of a terrifying demeaning where it's like, I am a vampire, I do have gold, I do wear black, but I'm also this old, and although I look 17, uh, skinny 17, I can beat you with my finger, so I wouldn't try it. And he also has an, uh, a more um, punk rock to him when he goes out to clubs or whatever, um, ties his hair back, puts on a literally a belly button shirt and everything, and sorry I'm rambling, but... You know. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just drawing some corrections as you go. Because <laughs> uh, the start, well, that's the thing is, like, some of the characters that I've worked on, there's actually stories too. Uh, most of you guys haven't heard them. Um, you may have, because I, I think there was the one time I read one of the stories. They're pretty dark, generally. Was it based uh, on Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember, I actually, I was listening to it, and I was like, wow, I can really picture this, and it stuck out in my mind, and actually, I remember your, the Alice in Wonderland characters that you drew, and for some odd reason, I kept placing those as the care as, um, even though it was a short bit, I kept thinking of, like, you know, how you would draw the, the, the queen, and I originally, and I remember you said originally she was a cannibal, so, oh, she is. <laughs> so I was literally picturing this, Although she sounds pretty when people, when her goons are describing her, <laughs> I bet you when they literally go into the palace, they kind of like, oh my god, I, I can't look directly at her. She got a, an artery dripping from her mouth. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how I envisioned it. I'm just, yeah, uh, it's pretty close, <laughs> which is good, because that means a lot came through. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's not too many corrections. I would definitely work on the legs, though. Uh, right. Trying to get that dangling look for feet and legs is kind of hard, so you're going to have to do quite a few sketches to try and get that look. Right. Uh, I don't know what type of reference you would use for that. Can't exactly find dead bodies on the street. No, but what you can do is... Unless, uh, um. This might be a stretch, but maybe if you have someone take the picture for you and you just, like, go over, like, a railing of sorts, like, obviously a safe distance fall railing, like, maybe three, four feet, probably, and, you know, just dangle your legs over that and just have the guy, like, take pictures of it, though you'd have to really lose, like, control of your waist, like, zerk. <laughs> yeah, you're probably going to have to find... Um Somebody that's going to volunteer for that. <laughs> <laughs> or at least to take the photo. <laughs> yeah. 
Or maybe looking at movies with um, people getting hanged where they just show, like, the uh, or shows where they just show, like, the weight, like, um, obviously, you know, the waist down, probably. Oh, Which... you know what? Borrow um, a rag doll. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, see if you can find, like, some old thrift store rag doll that you can borrow that's somewhat proportionate to a human figure. Somewhat proportionate. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's probably going to give you the, the best reference because, like, the body would arch quite a bit. Yeah. I was experimenting with the arching with this one in particular because I knew that I was going to change it on a diagonal. So there were times where I did have to set this back to, like, a straight position if they were just, you know, weren't tilted. So I did my best to kind of, like, really try and really at least uh, get her anatomy right um, for the dangling look. And I also thought about it a little bit um, where it's like, if she was getting, like, blood sucked out of her, you know, um, like, in that manner, if you think about it realistically, um, you know, maybe she would be stiff for, like, a few seconds, probably. She'd probably be kicking, actually. Oh. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> She'd probably be like, oh no, oh, oh, this is not going to be good. <laughs> um, I also tried my best to make it look like um, he was, because uh, originally um, when I was looking at the pictures of waterbending, um, there was a scene where Katara just thrashed someone with water while they were just right in front of her, and she just like... Pfft, like, thrash them, her arms are straight, you know, leg out, and he, like, went flying. So I tried my best to copy, like, that pose, but I didn't quite get I didn't quite get it, so I wanted to look at it uh, some more. And I was mostly paying attention to the water, actually, and how it was forming. And um, I wanted to try so very, very hard, and excuse my language viewers, but I wanted to try very, very hard to make it look like he wasn't sucking blood from her area. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I had it, like, where it was right at her stomach, but I looked at it more and more, and before I even drew it, I was like, I don't want it to make it look like he, he, he's getting the blood from there, because that would just be yeah, so Yeah, okay, that's cool. fair. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many comments I want to say right now. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I can't say them. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to draw it blue for you, uh, just so that it stands out as a different color. Because mm -hmm. uh, what you can do is you can have it, like, coming around her. Mm -hmm. Kind of like this. So it's, like, almost holding her and then coming back down. Mm -hmm. So you could do something like that. Like, I have no right. objections to how you've currently drawn it, though. Mm -hmm. So, you could do that, or you could just keep it the way it is. Okay. Um, if you draw it like this, it'll look like it has more weight. Mm -hmm. And, and if you do that, you may actually yeah. want to move the entire scene down, so this uh, line would actually be moved down further. Right. Um, this area does need something. Um, I put a garbage can, because... Kind of looks like it might possibly be a school, because uh, it's very void of life. Yeah. And schools are void of life. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you can do is you can put even uh, background here. Yeah, uh, I was. Put, put, yeah, I was hesitant on doing that because I wanted to show like pipes and everything and I, I there was a lot going on because I still wanted to keep it steampunk-ish kind of but still you know a really void looking area very neutral you, this could be like in any city really kind of deal so I, I wanted to keep the keep it a bit ambiguous um, you could add actual pipes uh, as the supports okay uh, for uh, for this, so you can have the pipes here. 
Oh, yeah, that's right, because um, there's a lot of that here in New York City. Oh, my gosh. I don't know why I didn't look at the street, so look at the street sooner. But, um, yeah. Uh, and New you York can have smaller pipes, uh, like, essentially making up the frame. Uh-huh. Because I know that some schools have, like, they're kind of like these wooden benches. Uh-huh. So you could go for that. Right. And that would hold the steampunk feel. Uh, I would add those supports. Uh, those supports actually tend to curve this way, like this, and then go out, and then they have their nail or screw in there. Uh, uh -huh. So you can actually add those in as well. Right. Um, probably not as many as I've drawn in. Uh, but you could put something similar. Uh, you could also put in the base here uh, mm -hmm. what you would normally see in plumbing uh, is essentially a cap where this wire can actually go through. Plumbing. And you could add some weird pipes in here because you already mm -hmm. have the gear in the center here. Yeah. So. Originally, that was supposed to be like a call box of sorts, which explains like the weird bell thing that I put there. Yeah, I was wondering about that. <laughs> but it looks like a bell. It's cool, though. <laughs> hey, but it could be. It could be a weird, you know, steampunkish call box. I was trying to, again, I tried to put emphasis on the steampunk slash um, ambiguity to this area. I would embrace the steampunkness. Because <laughs> that's pretty awesome to do. <laughs> um, also, walls and buildings tend to have this, um, essentially this rim. Mm. Oh, uh, to yeah. yeah, to cover up, uh, like, <laughs> well, when they put the drywall, they wanted to make it look pretty. Uh, so they <laughs> put that on there. <laughs> Uh, you could also add like these subdivisions in the wall. So um, if it is steampunk, uh, you could do something like this, mm -hmm. and maybe it's there's like these tiny little crevices. Maybe it's not actually joined fully. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's joined at these like weird portions here. Yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, is this a painting or a mirror? Um, the reference I was looking at, um, it was originally a window, and then, um, it, when I, uh, looked at more reference, uh, of that very same one, I actually realized from, uh, I actually realized it was actually a bricked up window, so I did my best to try and emphasize that there was something there, but the reason why those brush strokes are there are supposed to be the bricks, and that's what I did for the brickish, like, feel that I was... Go, um, that I had going on. Okay. That's cool, though, that you added that detail then. <laughs> uh, you could have part of it, like, crumbling, maybe. Okay. So it doesn't have to be uh, new bricks. If they're covered up, mostly, then maybe some of them are coming apart here. Yeah, yeah. And there's... If they were covering up part of it, then they probably put some form of frame around it. Yeah, they, I also saw that too. It was a big frame around, because uh, I had to look up like bricked up windows as well, and I noticed that there was some framework to it, now that I remember. So there would be an indent then, before coming into the bricks. Yeah. And you can add some more pipes. Yeah. <laughs> you could pretty much add as many pipes as you want at the steam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, key thing, though, is I will always recommend that you kind of like offset them so that they're never just like going straight in one direction. Yeah. Because it makes it look really good. And uh, there's different types of pipes. True, yeah. Uh, generally, there's a cap. So if it goes beyond a certain point, they'll cap it. Mm -hmm. So you can actually include that in certain parts. Okay, doke. All right, so that one's good. Let's save that guy too. Okay. Uh, we've already done 
that one. Why isn't this one loading? Okay. I really like the atmosphere of this one. Uh, that one's digitally drawn. You used a soft round brush on this, didn't you? And then some texture brushes? Um, actually, I did some texture brushes on a few of them because, again, it was like a bricked up area and I wanted to show that these weren't just smooth, perfect building. I wanted to show that these actually had some texture to them. So I did what I could in terms of the texture, but because the shading I did was already so overpowering, and especially because it was like a rough slash tonal that I was showing you, I was like, let me just show at least some, at least just in case. But um, yeah, for this one, I remember I was looking up reference for like, I guess you could say um, uh, cities at night. And there was this one, I think it was in either... Italy, one of the old world cities, where it was like, um, originally where the character is standing actually is where, um, in much to the foreground actually, is a, a bench, and it, I found it like really, really nice, and it looked very creepy, especially, um, especially if maybe you changed the lighting and the atmosphere was, you know, um, a little weird, so I was like, that's the perfect, like, reference that I was looking for, so I did what I could with this one. And, um, you know, I tried to add pipes as much as I could, and I tried to work on the windows just a tad bit more, and because it was kind of like there was light coming from two points, one where the character is looking up and the other which is, like, behind him, I did my best to try and, like, get that lighting down and know what parts reflected, what parts, you know, just stayed a flat color, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I did my best with this one as well. Um, I would definitely break up some of the shapes. Uh, okay. I like your lighting. I love your lighting. So uh, I would play def continue playing with the lighting the way you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. The windows, uh, you would generally have a ledge below it. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's steampunk, you can have uh, pipes going below that, maybe joining. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also add decorative tops to your windows. Right. And maybe those decorative tops are actually made with pipes. Right, right. That would help tie everything together. Um, and you can maybe put the gear on top, too, even if you want. Uh, yeah, actually, that would be pretty cool if you added the gear up on top. <laughs> Big old gear. <laughs> we're steampunk and we're proud. That's what this city's about. <laughs> Well, it would depend on when it was made, right? So maybe during this time period, that was the, the style, and everybody was like, hey, I've got to get into that style. True, yeah. Or maybe um, maybe there was something that happened in the city at some point, and when they redecorated everything, they were like, oh, we might as well go with the new fashion trend, which is steampunk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can also add uh, subdivisions for the windows. Okay. Something like that. That actually looks pretty cool. Uh, so you could play around with that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for this piece, uh, another inspiration was, uh, again, this is gonna sound corny. Um, Kingdom Hearts, there's this level where it's called Hollow Bastion. And uh, I now that I'm thinking about um, thinking about it, uh, it's literally part when you go inside the level, you can see it's part like traditional stone, you know, um, you know, majestic castle Disney feel, obviously. But on the other side of it, on like the other half of the castle, there's like pipes and steam, and it, it looks decrepit. But like, it, you know, I really tried my best to kind of, again, emphasize some steampunk into this and some steampunk inspiration, which that was also part of it. <laughs> I would definitely lengthen this guy's cowl because uh, you're going for the bat light appearance. Mm -hmm. And probably the best bat light appearance I know of is Batman. Batman. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so just go with it. <laughs> If you're going to do something that's kind of Batman-related. 
it's going to be easily recognizable too. Like, and it's your own character, so it's not like he has the two ears on the top, right? Yeah. It's not like you added this mm -hmm. and added a mask. <laughs> 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 so... You won't have to worry about copyright. Yeah, that would actually make it look pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. And you can make that as big as you want. You can also add more if you want. Right, right. Nothing's stopping you. <laughs> it's like it's like feathers or feathers on a jacket. You know, I I can't get over fur or feathers on a jacket or especially around like the collar or the sleeves. It's just oh my god. <laughs> It looks good. <laughs> There's a reason why people draw it. <laughs> it looks epic. Now, obviously, most guys won't wear that, but they could still draw it. I would. <laughs> it's hard to find, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. The only thing that comes I close to that jacket is... Um, my Billy London jacket, which I usually use for reference on, like, trench coats and things of that nature. <laughs> there was one guy uh, who came in once. He was a super cool guy. And he actually had a jacket that was, like, literally all out fuzzy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and it was fluorescent pink. And I'm like, that's <laughs> an awesome jacket. <laughs> He, he he definitely was like, you know what? I'm gonna put I'm gonna wear pink and put some glitter on it, and God bless. And he just, he just he just went. He with did it, it. yeah. <laughs> and well, he was working, it and he had confidence. <laughs> yeah, it does take a lot of confidence to do that. Um, it looked good though. It was a nice jacket. Mhm. Mm you don't see those jackets very often. For real. Um, so this is a raised edge, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would definitely wrap the cowl as he's moving around this. Okay. So it's like trailing behind him. Mm-hmm. So like literally make it as long as you can. Because <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll look cool if it's just like dragging behind him. I... I never thought to put that dra that that long train for his jacket though. I, it never occurred to me. I mean, he's a dramatic character, but I never thought to put that. Now that I think about it, I think I might have him right. Uh, I think I might write him a little bit with that train now. <laughs> well, hold on a sec. Uh, where's the lights coming from? Okay, you have them coming from here. Uh huh. Uh, and here. Uh, I guess the lighting won't allow for it. Uh, Kez, you could in his shadow, <laughs> just for the hell of it. Like, obviously, the angle's not gonna work in this care in in this angle shot, but it would have been cool if you added like the Batman. <laughs> 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 um, you probably run into some e some issues though with your teachers, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it would have been cool. Maybe for your personal stuff you could do that. <laughs> Just like a monstrous figure in his shadow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? Oh, man, that would be so awesome. I'm actually working on a piece in my other class. Uh, it's a traditional piece. Um, I'm working in acrylic. Um, it's because uh, my teacher said I wanted to have some emotion to it, so it's this figure cowering, practically almost buck naked, very vulnerable, and there's like, of course, a little bit of a bamboo tree um, right there, a little bit of a plant. It was my teacher's idea, really, to like put the plant there and to get rid of the light source. But the shadow that this that's behind the figure, though, is very abstract and very monstrous looking, and something you don't, and it, with most common sense, you don't want to go near. So I try to make it as menacing as possible, but um, that's what it kind of reminds me of when we mentioned uh, Monstrous Shadows. <laughs> I'm just looking at this door, and you can have so much fun with this door. <laughs> uh, you can make it look almost prison-like if you want. 
Oh, like a, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> like a gate of some sort. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what's behind that door? Should I even go through it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Do I risk it? Do I not? Uh, I would move the edge in a tiny bit for the door, though. Okay. Um, just to give it a bit more depth. Uh-huh. Uh, but other than that, it's actually pretty good. Um, okay, so this is, like, kind of a walkway, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is a door, then? Um, a, not really original or arch. It, an arch, but, like, um... It had a, when I was looking at the building, it had a weird design to it, because it had, like, that little um, slant where um, a little mini roof was, and then it, like, came into a wall, so it was really weird. Okay. Um, so you just need to make it look, read a bit better? Yeah. Because uh, the angles, because you're not seeing too much of it, that's the reason why it's not reading as well. Yeah. So... You can add some more details in here and tie those details in here. All right. And then reinforce that that's essentially okay. a walkway. Yeah. Uh, also, this would probably actually go a bit higher. Okay. Yeah, I'm just playing around with the shapes now to see if it makes it read better or not. Yeah, go right on ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might have to add something like that just to make it read as an arch. Okay. It's just because you're not seeing very much of it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably pretty much it, though. It's just minor tweaks, really. Yeah. Uh, once again, like if you try to use... Uh, the U tool, the polygon tool, uh, you mm -hmm. can get those reference lines, which saves a lot of time. Okay, so I'm going to save this guy here. Wonder how big these files are. <clears throat> Turns out being 10 gigs. Oops! <laughs> So, uh, yeah, for this one, I I again did the traditional um uh, traditional, but also with um it was a glamour shot as from what I heard um from how my room uh, my not my roommate my classmates described it glamour shots kind of you know glamorize the character and when I thought about it and, and I looked at a few uh character sketches mostly from Dark Souls actually and I looked at them a little bit and I was like you know what. If these were concept sketches, if you just isolate one of them, like the one where it has one of the characters, it would actually have, that would actually be a really good just like single character piece right there. And so that kind of yep. helps me with, uh, it kind of helped me with this one in particular. Um, but for this one, for the reference, I, the body, I just used uh, myself in that pose. I put on the wedges and I just wound up having to walk a few times to and put my camera on timer for the uh for this one in particular. Those things are so painful to wear. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my only comment. It's like, oh Yeah, I have like two pairs of wedges actually. <laughs> two pairs of wedges and two pairs of high and two pairs of heels. One is a boot heel, the other is a uh regular party shoe heel. <laughs> um, believe it or not, most of those glamour shots are more feminine like anyway. Yeah. Uh so I'm just gonna emphasize the feminine curves to this drawing. <laughs> because this character really is like very, very feminine. <laughs> From his then outfit. embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> From his outfit to his normal modern wear to to his default wear, it's 
he's very feminine. So, um, and from what I heard, wearing wedges is actually kind of um, uh, what am I? How did my friend describe it? Like the uh, the way that she described it when she was looking at me from the back was like around my hip area. I had more emphasis around my hips. Yeah. Or before when I was wearing the wedges or heels. So that actually worked for um, a lot of drawings that I did when it involved the character with heels. <laughs> And now that I'm thinking back to that uh, train, um, not, not the train, the um, yeah, the cape, the train cape, like Batman. Now that I'm thinking about it, if I tweak this one up a bit, I could probably do that with this one, probably. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Because I because I made the cape very short in this one. <laughs> Another unique thing about this character as well is um, the way that he sucks the blood out of his victims. And also, from the two little globs that you see in his hand, he actually does this thing uh, called blood magic. And, of course, in almost any video game or any lore depicting blood magic, obviously the manipulation and casting of spells via blood. And so I really wanted to make it very... The way people do it is they do a roundabout way to do it, um, where it's just, you know, a, a spell involving blood. But I really wanted to make it something very literal and make it to where he's actually taking blood, coagulating it to a point where it's not going to break, and he's going to shoot it at you. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, that's the way that I wanted to go about it. Uh, if you're going to... Okay, this is going to be a morbid thing to look up, though. Uh, let's see. I'm sure my viewers don't mind. Are we allowed to put this on? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh, how'd you write that? Oh, huh, there's already an auto-search for that. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> I don't know whether or not it should be dismayed or not. It doesn't look that bad. <laughs> It looks like they're making... Oh, that's bad. Oh. That's oh. gross. Oh. All right, switch it away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've you. had enough of that. <laughs> um, so maybe have the chunks in the base? Okay. And then have more of like a fluid mess up top. Yeah. Okay, I never, I never thought about it that way actually. Like hard towards the bottom, but very flowy towards the top. Yes, right. and I'm immediately closing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to come back to that later. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, what you look at just for art. <laughs> I remember I was doing a, a piece in gouache, actually, and I think that was the only time I ever successfully pulled off gouache. And it was, um, uh, it was the, oh, God, what was it? It was the, the birthday surprise, and my teacher said, make it a birthday party. So he, he themed it, and he said, but he didn't say cutesy, kiddish type of party. So instead, I wound up going for a gory route to it where it's this, it's this kid. Uh, this this little baby and um, uh, and there's a birthday cake but the funny thing is in the cake there were organs and on top of the cake was a head you didn't know if it was his mother babysitter father you didn't know and obviously what the kid has in his hand and what he's munching on is a heart and on oh, top of the God, that's hilarious and on top and on top of the head was um a, a melted candle that said one on it. <laughs> So, so I uh, one of I, many victims to come. <laughs> so um, I had fun with that one, but I went into I went into the piece. I had fun with it, but I went into the piece thinking my professor is gonna hate this, 
but he he as far as I'm concerned, he he liked the beginning sketches of it though, where he was like dark macabre as the way that he pronounced it. So um, you know, I I just went with it, and surprisingly enough, everyone had good things to say about it. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. Well, humans are naturally attracted to it, though. <laughs> no, it's true. Most of us deny it, but it doesn't stop from being true. American Horror Story, everyone's attracted to the gore in that show. I think it's more because people see it as being a taboo to be attracted to those things, but we are all attracted to it because it is a taboo. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of brush are you using? Because I know you experiment a lot with your brushes, and um, I, I, I all, I, actually, I also kept thinking that you used a round, a soft round brush, but when I looked at it, I was like, wait a minute, she's actually using a square brush. So I thought you were using, I actually thought you were using one of the pencil brushes. Um, no, I'm using the, the chalk brush. Yeah. Uh, well, today I am. Because <laughs> it's true, I like to experiment. Yeah, it's mostly minor tweaks on this one. Uh -huh. You could... Okay, depends on how dark you want to make this. Because <laughs> uh, the question is, where did the blood come from? True, very, very true. <laughs> so you could have his veins like, essentially showing that like, he's bleeding it out of himself. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, then he'd also have to, like, well, probably kill somebody to... Yeah. <laughs> Be able to uh, make up for loss nutrients. Yeah. So describe it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This one's pretty good. Yeah, I definitely just go with the giant cake. You can, so why not? Yeah. Uh, it's minor tweaks on the pose. Not a huge deal. Okay, yep. Um, you may want to play with the proportions a bit. Okay, yep. Uh, oh, and I should probably tell you exactly which brush I'm using. I am using Chalk number 17 Pixels is apparently the name of this brush. It should be a default brush. Got it. Because I might experiment with that brush. <laughs> it's, it's funny because like, for the longest time I hated that brush. <laughs> <laughs> then I came back to it and I was like, oh, I don't hate it. I just can paint with it now. <laughs> it's funny because you reach a point where like, it really doesn't matter about the brushes once you understand how the brushes work. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to save this. Oh, yeah. Well. Uh, don't lose these files because I'm going to delete them after. Yeah, sure thing, definitely. All right, and that's actually not bad for time too. So that's pretty much the normal amount of time that I stream for. Okay, no. Um, so that's going to be it for tonight. Okay, no. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon. So thank you and take care. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to say goodbye too, or. Oh yeah. Um. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's been an honor uh, to uh, to be on here, actually, because I really do enjoy these streams. <laughs> well, they're fun to do. <laughs>